Hello everyone. Let's start with the next session on transmission and distribution. So the learning objectives of this particular session are you'll be able to find the value of inductance in a single circuit line, considering sing, uh, symmetrical and unsymmetrical spacing of the lines. And also you'll be knowing the need or the importance of transposition of lines. That is how would they affect the performance of the transmission uh, line. So how, why is transposition of lines very important? And you will also be able to determine uh, the value of inductance considering transposition of lines. So these are the learning objectives of this particular session. Let's start with the session. So before we actually start inductance of a single circuit line uh, with symmetrical and unsymmetrical spacing and also finding out the value of inductance in case of considering the transposition of lines. So let us let us know what actually is a single circuit line and a double circuit line because you'll be given either a single or a double circuit line to determine the value of inductance. So just deriving it without knowing what these lines are um, will not make any sense. So to start with, let us know what is a single circuit transmission line. A single circuit transmission line will have uh, three sets of conductors. Double circuit line, as the name itself is telling, it has two circuits and each circuit will have three sets of conductors. That is the major difference between single circuit and double circuit transmission lines. So double circuit uh, transmission lines are usually preferred where reliability is of need, okay, or where reliability is of utmost importance. Okay, and this the major advantages of double circuit transmission lines are they have the capability to transfer more power over a particular distance. And uh, they will also be relatively cheap uh, and and a stick point of view uh, sense is also better. So people usually prefer double circuit transmission lines and uh, they usually consist of double uh, bundle conductors, bundle conductors. So these are some of the uh, basics or fundamentals pertaining to single circuit and double circuit lines. So let's start uh, with the next part that is to determine the value of inductance considering single circuit and double circuit lines for symmetrical and unsymmetrical spacing. So to begin with, it is inductance of single circuit three phase transmission line with symmetrical, asymmetric, uh, unsymmetrical spacing. Uh, the name, as the name itself is telling, it is unsymmetrical spacing. The spacing between the conductors will not be the same. It will not be symmetrical, okay, or they will not be in symmetry. So this is the conductor. How the, you have dx, y, dx, z, and d, y, z in the diagram. So all the spacing between these three is not the same. That is the reason it is called as unsymmetrical. So you have i x, i y, and i z as the as the uh, these are the currents that are flowing the conductor i x for x conductor i y for y conductor current for y conductor and z for z i z for z conductor. So one simple thing as you already know. Uh, when the current starts flowing through the conductor, obviously there will be magnetic field and flux linkages will be there. So with the same principle, we will start writing the expression as we have derived the expression in the last two sessions. In the similar ground, same formula, the fundamental or the expression, general expression is the same, but you are applying it for X conductor carrying current AX and Y conductor carrying current IY and Z conductor carrying current IZ. So the three conductors X, Y, Z as shown in the diagram, uh, is carrying currents Ix, Iy, and Iz. So you will assume that the radius of each conductor is R, and they are unsymmetrically spaced as shown in the figure. Radius of the conductor, are, this is this the radius of this particular conductor as shown in the arrow will be R. This will also be R, and this will also be R. The flux linkage of conductor X due to current Ix. That is nothing but lambda x is nothing but the flux linkage. General expression is 2 into 10 power minus 7 into ix. Lan of 1 divided by r dash is a distance. It's like how you have written in the last class. We have written distance of conductor x with respect to x is dxx. Then you have dxy and dxz. Okay. So first you have I, x conductor, y conductor, and z conductor. The distance of this is the first thing that you should take, x with respect to x, and x with respect to y, and x with respect to z. Okay, so x with respect to s, you know, it is r dash. I have explained that that is nothing but a fictitious conductor or a imaginary conductor. 
and uh, the distance between x and y is I, uh, dxy and x and z conductor x with respect to the other the last one is xz so this is the general expression so similarly flux linkages of conductor y and z is written in a similar manner so it's flux linkage y is nothing but 2 into 10 power minus 7 ix it is uh, xy with respect to x initially and since you're considering y here which is y with respect to y so it is r dash when you consider a conductor a distance with respect to its own, it is nothing but imaginary fixtures. So in that case, you should consider the radius as R dash and uh, Y with respect to Z. Similarly, the last case is 2 into 10 power minus 7. What would be the case over here? You can just note Z with respect to Z. That is the reason at the place of Z, you have R dash. Okay. The remaining is z with respect to x and z with respect to y and z with respect to z is r dash here it is y with respect to y and previous case it was x with respect to x okay let's see what exactly since the inductance is the flux linkage per ampere as already explained in session one it is you can observe over here is flux linkages of each phase is not the same therefore inductance of each phase will obviously be different Okay, each phase, if the flux linkages is changing, obviously inductance will change because inductance is nothing but you know flux linkage is divided by the current. So different inductance in each phase will will lead to an unbalanced circuit. So as a result, transposition is necessary. We will see what exactly is transposition. To avoid problems that occur in an unbalanced circuit, you prefer transposition so transposition will balance the inductances the problem in the pre asymmetrical spacing is since the distance is changing with respect to the conductors obviously his inductance will change that is lambda x lambda y lambda z will be different if lambda is nothing but what flux linkages if that is different inductance is nothing but flux linkage by current inductance will also change this uh, uneven distribution of uneven values of inductance is making the circuit unbalanced uh, which leads to so many other problems which we'll discuss when we get actually get into transposition so transposition is usually preferred to balance the inductances so we will move on to the next part that is transposition of lines what exactly is transposition how will you transpose the conductor so now you saw there was unsymmetrical spacing so how will you transpose a conductor it's nothing but you're rotating the conductors which will result in the conductor or phase being moved to the next physical location in a regular sequence. It's like cyclic symmetry. Simple thing as in the maths you would have studied in your basic maths, 10th standard or in 12th cyclic symmetry. You will be replacing X, Y, Z if there are three conductors. After Z, what will you get? You will again get X, Y and Z. So it's cyclically symmetry. So the transposition is you are rotating the conductor in this manner. In this fashion, you will be rotating the conductors. So that will give you transposition. We will see that in, with, with respect to a diagram. So in electrical power transmission line, conductor arranges unequal space. Usually it will be unequal spacing will be all practically that will be there. It may not be balanced all the time. So as a result, voltage drops will also not be the same. To eliminate this effect, how, how are they eliminating this? They are interchanging the conductor position. As I said, cyclic symmetry is a method that is followed. So they're interchanging the conductor position. That interchanging of conductor position is nothing but transposition of lines. See, position, you have trans. So you're interchanging the position. That is the reason it is called as transposition or transposed conductor. So when do you prefer transposition? When the transmission line length is more than 100 kilometers, as per the electrical requirements, it is recommended that the three phases need to be transposed. The line length is 100 kilometers. It's definitely recommended to transpose the conductor. Okay. So this uh, tra transposition arrangement is much necessary when there is a capacitance between the power conductor because because the dielectric medium you will also have uh, capacitance so again you will be studying when we start determination of capacitance how would transposition affect in that particular case we will move come exactly to the topic 
so now we will, we will be given a three phase uh, lines wherein you are supposed to transpose it and determine the value of uh, uh, inductance so generally in a power transmission system transmission lines are not equally spaced as already mentioned so as a result it leads to unbalance that is voltage drops will be different magnetic flux lines will be different and hence inductance will also be different so in order to balance this you prefer transposition and due to asymmetrical spacing what is the thing that is happening magnetic fields external to the conductor is not zero okay magnetic fields that are external external flux linkages are not zero so this would also cause induced voltage in the adjacent electrical circuit that means it would cause interferences okay and the major problem is interference of telephonic lines it will also cause interference of telephonic lines because of the induced voltages in the adjacent electrical circuit so as a result to reduce this minimum you have you know to reduce this effect to a lower value or to a lesser value transposition of conductors is usually recommended as you know you will be changing the position of the conductor with respect to each other so that gives rise to transposition and this will also balance the electro the dielectric media or as i said capacitance will also be balanced inductance will also be balanced all such problems can be avoided okay all unbalanced problems that creates unbalanced values of capacitance unbalanced value of inductances can be totally avoided if the lines or the conductors are transposed so these are some of the benefits of transposition and there is an absolute need for transposition of conductors so this is how you can see position 1 position 2 position 3 and again position 1 so this is that is the reason i told you it is cyclic symmetry so you have x y z okay uh, each position will be one third with respect to each other value of each position will be there are three position so individual will get one third so you have x that is replaced by x y z you can see this is z this is z this is y and this is x okay this is how it is transposed so initial positions are shown in the figure so in the next change over is conductor x occupies position 2 y occupies position 3 and z occupies position 1 okay see here x in uh, you can order the change and see y and again x okay so here you are your y x z and y and here you have z y x and z but how are we getting it see here it is x one conductor you have considered and you have y conductor and you have z conductor okay this is how transposition is done and again you have the original position that starts over here that is x y and z okay so when, and the subsequent transposition is x will go for 3 y will go for 1 and z occupies position 2 the conductors are then brought back to original position that was the last position that you saw position 1 position 2 and position 3 after 3 and again you will move on to position 1 the flux linkages of conductor x in three different position with respect to the diagram is this so conductor x with respect to position 1 conductor x with respect to position 2 and conductor x with respect to position 3 so again the similar grounds derivation you have ix iy and iz are the three currents that are flowing so first part is distance of the conductor with respect to its own that is the reason it you have r dash r dash can be replaced by d11 so next is d12 and d31 so next x x 2 since a, this remains since you are doing it x with respect to 2 it is the same so see here the, the x is with respect to x because you have taken only x here so that is the reason next case also you have ix lan 1 by r dash ix lan 1 by r dash because it's x with respect to x the ch position change over here it is d12 and d31 initially will consider second one is what 1 becomes 2 2 becomes 3 that is cyclic symmetry here it is d3 3 becomes 1 1 becomes 2 this is same and again 2 becomes 3 3 becomes 1 and 1 becomes 2 2 becomes 3 so this is showing that the conductors are 
totally transposed. Okay, so what is the average value of flux linkage lambda x? So lambda x is not just lambda x here. It is lambda x1 plus lambda x2 plus lambda x3 divided by 3. So you will get 2 into 10 power minus 7 divided by 3. This is the simplified expression. 3 times this into logarithmic function, you know, you can multiply them. So this is the phase the currents add up to 0 as the one is forming the return path for the other. So this is the expression that you get. So this will be the expression for flux linkage with respect to x. And this denominator is replaced as r dash, which is nothing but the geometric mean of uh, radius of conductor x. And inductance is nothing but inductance with respect to x conductor is lambda x divided by x. I x. This is a simplified expression. This lamb l x is only for conductor x, but you have it for conductor y and you have it also for conductor z. Whatever the derivation that was done here uh, for, for the case of x conductor, similar grounds, it, you, it has to be found for conductor y and conductor z, wherein you will be getting l y and l z. Okay. Now we will just see a frequent transposition usually leads to complication of support structures. You know, these lines are on supports, different types of supports and, it, and their mechanical strength, tensile strength, everything you've studied in module one. So frequent transposition will leads to complications and maintenance related problems. Maintenance that is increase in cost, all such problems, uh, searching search of working persons in order to do that support cause everything will obviously change there is some maintenance problem if the transposition occurs frequency difference in inductance is negligibly small because of asymmetrical spacing the value of inductance will slightly differ may not be to a greater extent the inductance of the line which is not transposed is considered as the average value of three inductance this is the general simplification technique next we will move on to equal spacing. Why see? First is unsymmetrical spacing. There was problem in unsymmetrical spacing. I did not start equilateral spacing first and unsymmetrical spacing and then transposition. I started the session with unsymmetrical spacing because it's unbalance is leading to problem. As a result, you should go for transposition. Once you finish transposition, then you have to go for equalization that is equilateral spacing so here things are very easy distance between each context is the value itself is same it's like an equilateral triangle as a result d equivalent is equal to d so whatever the expression that you got in equation 8 whatever that we got in equation 8 this expression if you replace that values d1 2 d2 3 and d3 1 by d equivalent it's nothing but d okay here it, this this value was termed as d equivalent so if this equivalent is nothing but D here as per equation 8. So the derivations become very simple. What will be the value of different derivation here? 2 into 10 power minus 7 ln D divided by D. Very simple. Okay. Next we will move on to a three-phase double circuit line. As I already told, double circuit will have two circuits and each circuit will have three sets of conductors. That is the exact meaning of double circuit lines. So we will just see what are double circuit lines, what are its benefits in detail to some extent here. So actually they are preferred to increase, they are capable of transferring more power as I already told over a particular distance or from one point to other. And when the lines, transmission lines are usually connected in parallel. Two configurations are considered in analyzing, usually two configurations are considered in analyzing a double circuit line. As we know, it is symmetrical equilateral spacing and unsymmetrical spacing. Okay, self and mutual inductance effect also should be given of more importance. Since inductance, are, since the lines are in parallel, okay, there are two lines in parallel, there are effect of even mutual inductance. The induced DMF in one should not affect the other one, so that should not lead to major problems. So as I said, in this particular case, self and mutual inductance effects will be more if the circuits are on the same towers than on different towers. If these double circuit lines are on the same tower, these effects would be more. So that will also you need to take into consideration. Okay. But if there are different towers, it will be there, but the effect will be not that significant. As a result, we need to separate the individual conductors of a phase and keep the 
active during the phase as small as possible. The remedy to not to avoid the self and mutual inductance effects on these conductors if they need to be separated. That is say, separation of individual conductors of a phase and some distance and distance between the phases has to be made as minimum as possible. So this is uh, a double circuit line. Uh, the way the conductors are scattered, this is how. So you have X, Y, Z here, and then you have X dash, Y dash, Z dash. So this is the actual uh, diagram of double circuit lines, three phase double circuit lines. So now we are considering inductance of a three phase same double circuit line with symmetrical spacing. So now the only the first thing that comes into your mind, so it's drawn. Uh, it is placed so for a, a, a triangle is not considered over here you have considered a regular hexagon conductors must be placed at the vertices of a regular hexagon in order to analyze this vertices of a regular hexagon as shown in the figure so you have conductors x y z belong to one circuit as already mentioned here and x dash y dash z dash belong to the second circuit that is the reason it is called as double circuit lines okay x y z and x dash y dash Z, a double circuit line where X, Y, Z denotes the respective phases of the system. X, Y, Z will denote the respective phases of the system. So you can see a value here D, you have a value D here, value 2D, root 3D. So this value you can get by you have to use trigonometric analysis in order to find these values. Okay, when you just consider the distance of a particular triangle, you know, a trigonometry, you have A, B, C, you want to find the value of A, B. What will you do? You find the values of remaining and you will find the unknown. This such trigonometric and based on that trigonometric analysis, these values are found, but we are writing it directly. So here you have uh, D, X, Y, D, Y, Z. What is D, X, Y here? So you have D, X, Y. So you have D here distance between x y this distance between x y you are supposed to find okay this distance between x y you are supposed to find okay to find this distance between this part is root 3 d and you know the y if you know the value of this particular distance if it is 2 d so this will be d so here you will have d so this d and this root 3 d will give you the value of x y it is like that okay okay it's like that you should know what exactly the value will be between this and this if the value assume i'm just assuming the value between z dash and this if it's 2d okay okay and what will you find and this would be d this distance is already given root 3d you should find the value of x y similarly over here this and this if you know you can find between this okay on similar grounds these value d root 3d and 2d is fine so again here symmetrical spacing balance current you will be considering it as ix iy and iz which is equal to zero and the each conductor will have a radius of r same derivation but you are adding since it is double circuit earlier it was ix land one by r dash iy land one by some distance iz land one by some distance but here you have as since they're double circuit lines you can see you are have an addition here you have lan one by r dash plus lan the other distance Okay, it's 2 into 10 power minus 7. This values you already know. You see your chain I, R dash, D, and 3D. The similar grounds, each value. So it will be the distance that you are finding first. So it is DX with respect to X. And the next part is it will be DX, X dash. So you have 2D here. And if it's root 3D, it will be this value, X with respect to Z. Okay, so this and the next step, you are simplifying both lan addition you can simply multiply it's been multiplied and it's further simplified two are having the same values here i y and i z as a result they are added and it's taken common but i y plus i z it is already told it is minus i x so this is just a simple mathematical simplification so the value of flux linkage with respect to conductor x is 2 into 10 power minus 7 into i x into lan of root 3 d divided by 2 r dash Inductance is nothing but LX divided by IX. This IX will go, the same expression will remain. So this is the expression 2 into 10 power minus 7 land root 3 divided root 3 D divided by 2 times R dash Henry per meter. Okay, you need to consider here since two conductors of X are in parallel, inductance of phase X LX will be the value of LX by 2. It will not be its value as it is 
it will be Lx by 2. In the similar grounds, you can derive the expression for Ly and Lz. It is exactly the same. You will get the same value. You will get different values. At, at the end, you will end up with the same distance. This root 3d distance will be the same. This 2r dash distance will be the same. So the next part over here, we will consider the same inductance of a three-phase double circuit line unsymmetrically spaced. That means they are not in equal at space. The distance between them are totally different. Okay, they are not the same. There you can find most of the distance were equal. But here you will have some changes. If the conductors are not symmetrically spaced, as I've already mentioned, it leads to unbalance. Okay. In order to calculate the inductance of the line, you need to assume that the line is transpose. Since it is a three-phase double circuit line, it's not that easy to tell, to calculate the inductance with respect to a double circuit line that is unsymmetrically spaced. Single you found out, but in double case, it is not that easy. That is the reason you should assume that they are transposed. Okay. The position of the phases of the first circuit will proceed in downward direction and the phases of second circuit over here will proceed in upward direction. That is cyclically. As I said, a cyclic symmetry method is followed in, or, in order to enable that transposition. Okay. That is the position that is followed. Position 1, 2 and 3 and, the first, and again you will go back to position 1. So it's cyclic symmetry. The distance between uh, position one of figure is follow, as follows. So here you will be considering D, X, Y, whatever the distance between this X, Y. You have X, Z, 1. Okay. X and Z dash. Okay. X and whatever the X you have here and this value. So if you find X, Z dash, you should put a triangle here and find out. Okay. That is H meters, X, Y is D meters, X, Y, 1 is G meters, and X, X, 1 is considered as F meters. Okay, similarly, a double circuit, you want, you know the first one, 1 by R dash into that distance, into that distance. Along with that, you should take the additional distance. And the D, X, Y, D, X, Z, D, X, Y, 1, X, X, 1, we have considered it as F. Similar, I'll just explain it for here. It is I, X, LAN, 1 divided by D, X, X plus LAN 1 divided by DX1. X1 is nothing but F. Similarly, here IY LAN 1 divided by D. It is X with respect to Y and it is X with respect to Y1. So Y1 is G, X with respect to Y is D. Similarly, here Z, Z with respect to X. Okay, Z with respect to X over here is D plus TD. You will get it is Z with respect to, yeah. Like you will get with 2D. Two times you need to add. Where is 2D here? Okay. Yeah, Z this one with respect to this. So you will be adding it. So if that is the case, you will have two times D. X, Y is D. Addition of that, you will get one more D. And it's nothing but X, Z one. So here it is X, Z. Here it is X, Z. And here it is X, Z one. So what is X, Z? X, Z is this x y z you know x y is d obviously y z will also be an addition of that okay x y is d x z is d plus d 2d and this is nothing but x z one same thing whatever you have written we have written it for the sake of simplicity you know to avoid lot many equations it's been reduced once if you write the rest remain the same and the next part is obviously the simplification so you have denominators addition so lan that can be easily multiplied and common has to be bought so common has to be brought together here wherever you find common values so average flux linkages of conductor x you will be getting it as flux linkage of x1 flux linkage of x2 and flux linkages of x3 you are dividing it by three so the simplified this will be the simplified expression so all uh, addition part wherever like terms are there that is brought together and they are being uh, segregated to one part and over here after segregating it in one part common terms are uh, again brought in combined after that you know x i x plus i y plus i z is equal to zero so i y plus i z is nothing but minus i x so again so it got further simplified as this so this is the final expression 2 into 10 power minus 7 i x lan 
whatever the value in the numerator and denominator. So this is nothing but flux linkage. Obviously, inductance will be L lambda x divided by x. So this is a simplified expression. And here, inductance of phase x will be Lx by 2. OK, so this is inductance of a, a double circuit line that is unsymmetrically spaced. You are assuming, you know, to find the unsymmetrical spacing, you assume that the double circuit lines are transposed. Okay, so this is with respect to the finding of the va values of inductance considering single phase circuit lines and double circuit lines. And we also got to know the importance of transposition of lines how transposition of lines are important. If they are not transported, what would be the consequence? And the advantages of double circuit lines, why are double circuit lines preferred over single circuit lines? And all that, I hope that you have got to know in this particular session. Thank you.